Northern Michigan versus Zachary Joseph Pellegrini, 226945SM. <coughs> Mr. Pellegrini appears this morning along with his attorney, Andrea Mashek Lassala. The prosecution appears through Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Alex Siminski. We're set for sentencing today. Ms. Mashek, did you have a chance to go over the pre sentence recommendations with Mr. Pellegrini? Yes, sir. Is there anything of a factual nature that appears inaccurate to you? Nothing of a factual nature. All right, then, Ms. Mashek, anything you wanted to say on behalf of Mr. Pellegrini? Yes, sir. You have a seat, please. Just so the court is aware, Your Honor, Ms. White was kept out outside the courtroom to not disturb the court while it was in progress. So that's why um, Mr. McLaren just had her come in. All right, thank you. Yeah. So she's she got here at 9.05. Go ahead, then, Ms. Uh, thank you. Your Honor, in large part, we are requesting that the court adopt the recommendations contained in the report. We are requesting, um, with respect to the recommendation for a general delay status, under MCL 771.1, we are requesting a deferred judgment of guilt under MCL 762.13. Specifically, Your Honor, we are requesting that the court grant my client status under that statute as a youthful trainee under the Holmes Youthful Trainee Act. In the present case, Mr. Pellegrini was 18 when the incident occurred. Um, he has been a model citizen while on bond, and I believe Mr. Pellegrini will be an excellent candidate for this program, and I believe that Mr. Pellegrini's circumstances are actually the reason that this Holmes Youthful Trainee Act was created. As the court is aware, HIDA can provide tremendous relief and opportunity for those who qualify and complete the program. Allowing Mr. Pellegrini to complete the HIDA program would give him the opportunity to prove himself to this court, the opportunity to show this court he can successfully complete probation, jail, community service work, fines, and whatever, um, whatever else the court requires of him. In the event that this court enters judgment under a general delay of sentence, I have great concerns, Your Honor, that even if Mr. Pellegrini successfully completes probation, jail, community service work, and any other term of his condition, that the people will not dismiss this charge. And therefore, the conviction would remain public, even though it is the court's intent to have it dismissed as non-public. It is very specific in the general delay statute and the HIDA statute that under general delay, the people have to agree to it. And in this specific case, um, there was no agreement. Mr. Pellegrini uh, pled straight up to the charges and there was no agreement for this case. So that is one of my great concerns. Under HIDA, due to my client's age, uh, when the incident occurred, uh, the court is able to make that determination themselves and it's not reliant upon the people um, being in agreement with that. Obviously, as an individual gets older, then the people and the court need to agree to HIDA. But with respect to my client and at his age, um, it would be the court. And I do believe that that is this court's intent. We did have a COPS hearing, and I, I do believe that the court, um, it's this court's intent to be able to give Mr. Pellegrini the opportunity to have this purged from his record if he is successful. And as I stated, I do have great concerns that that will not be accomplished under a general delay of sentence. Um, so for all of those reasons, Your Honor, we are respectfully requesting that you um, defer judgment on, uh, of guilt under MCL 762.13. Point one one, you mean? And, 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 and my biggest concern is that I don't think he qualifies. In the enter no contest plea, he's got to plead guilty to qualify for Holmes Youthful, for starters. All right, if you look at 762.11 sub paren 2, starts right off. If a individual pleads guilty to a criminal offense, blah, 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 blah. 762.13, Your Honor? 
Well, 762.11 is the predecessor. 762.13 goes on to talk about the different parameters, but 762.11 is the statute, the Homes Youthful Training Statute. So, Ms. Mashik, in regard to the matter, um, first off, I don't believe your client qualifies. I had mentioned to you last time that Mr. Perkala had filed a pleading. Essentially, your argument here this morning follows his pleading. You didn't notice that up at all for today's hearing. Um, in regard to the matter, I don't know if the people want to respond or not. I was planning on responding. If the court wishes to hear that now, I can. Um, go ahead. Your Honor, the people are in a difficult position because as Ms. Mashik points out, we haven't recommended any sort of sentence in this case. Um, in this case and every other uh, co-defendant case in this matter, they have all pled as charged um, to no contest as charged uh, to what was <laughs> alleged. And we have not recommended either delay or Homes Youthful Trainee Act. As the court is likely aware from Mr. Perkola's brief, the major difference, at least functionally, that uh, Ms. Mashik and Mr. Perkola rely on is this at the end of a general delay, the prosecutor, as the court is aware, the court sends over a successful completion of probation. Our prosecutor's office then reviews that paperwork and, in compliance with the statute, signs a motion dismissing. Uh, that is, and there is case law that can be relied upon that essentially says the court nor the defendant can enforce against the people or the prosecutor's office to dismiss that. And the notion there being the separation of powers. Uh, ultimately, the power to dismiss a case lies with the prosecution, the executive branch. That's really the only difference between Holmes Youthful Trainee Act and the delayed, General Delayed Sentence Act that the parties are relying on in asking the court for some deviance from what everyone else in this case got. I, I would simply point out that it's a faulty premise um, that this court has, I believe, been the district court judge for going on about five years now. This court has experience with our office. In that time, we have not refused to sign a single one of these dismissals. In fact, every single one has been uh, signed. And it's our position that unless there's a formal process removing a delayed sentence from an offender, that those are to be signed. While it is technically a discretionary function, it has been the uh, policy of our office to sign those if the offender successfully completes probation. And, and I can make that statement as an officer of the court and the court is, would be certainly aware if that were not true because the court sends the paperwork over and then authorizes the Nali prosecutor after. So realistically, the, the difference is this premise that somehow our office is gonna change the policy for this case. Well, this court and our office has dealt with hundreds if not thousands of cases, lots of them involving assaults, some of them involving even more heinous things, at least to the public's purview, animal neglect, similar conduct where people have received some sort of delayed sentence in our office, have they, if the offender successfully completes all of the terms of probation has always signed those. And I, I don't think there really is that big of a difference to be the argument to be made there that that's suddenly going to change. So that, that, that's the prosecutor's office position. And again, this isn't a recommendation on the other side and the recommendation is never affected whether or not we go along and sign those, it's more of a perfunctory role that our office performs because our office believes that offenders are entitled to due process and the appropriate process would be if they violated probation and we wanted to remove the delay, we'd have a probation violation hearing where their rights and their due process would be upheld. Thank you. Thank you. Any response? No, thank you. All right. Um, in respect to the matter, we did have a COPS hearing. I told you at that time what my intention was in respect to this matter. I am going to still honor that. I would honor the um, statements that I made at the time. I am not prepared to go along with the Homes Youthful Training Act on a number of levels. One, 
Like I said, based on the nature of the no contest plea, I do not believe he's eligible under the statute. And two, first and foremost, I think that um, the delay of sentence is appropriate given all of the circumstances, given the other individuals here. And I tend to agree, um, this court is just finishing up its fifth year on the bench. I have yet to see one case where the prosecution has not signed the delay of sentence, although a legitimate concern, Ms. Mashik, I'm not, I'm not making light of your argument here. It's a good argument, but um, I don't think it's appropriate at this point in time. Um, and I'm not prepared to grant a sentence under the Homes Youthful Training Act. I realize the Homes Youthful Training Act gives the court the opportunity to impose incarceration and essentially a two-year term of probation, which may be more constraining than the recommendations that are here concerning the delayed sentence, but um, nonetheless, that would be my intention is to follow these recommendations as I stated. And so Ms. Mashik, if you want to move ahead with sentencing today, then I guess the delay of sentence is also off the table because of the circumstances of what I've explained before in previous sentences regarding the penalty. So I don't know if you need time to talk to your client or what you want to do. Your Honor, we would ask that um, if possible, if the court would be willing to adjourn today's sentencing to my next sentencing date, I believe that's March 9th, and also if possible, if we could revoke Mr. Pellegrini's bond today. All right. Do you wish to be heard, Mr. Siminski? As long as he's revoking his bond today and it's not going to be an issue at the next sentencing, I'm not going to object to it. All right, so um, do you want to prepare the bond form and count the number of days and have the exact date that you wish him to be released or do you have that figured out? I did not prepare a stipulation, Your Honor. Um, it's important. It looks like he would be released on the 25th if uh, he starts. Today's the 16th. He's got credit for one day, nine days more, or we could do a duplicate form. So his bond will be reinstated on the 25th. Sentencing is moved to the 9th at what time? 1.30 p.m. 1.30. All your other bond terms remain in effect. If you have any questions, then Mr. Pellegrini. No, Your Honor. Mr. Siminski, anything else? No, Your Honor. It's 1.30. sounded wrong, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't the 9 a.m. docket. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, no, and no, um, good time.
going to add a provision onto this, Mr. Um, Pellegrini. I'm going to have them test you over there at the jail. If you're positive or if you're non-negative for any controlled substances that you don't have a prescription for, if you have a marijuana prescription no. or marijuana, then your bond is revoked and you will be sitting pending your sentencing date. One of the three nine. Yes. How can we get Miss Sanyaki from the jail when you get in there? And then we can do Macaulay and Thank you. 